Hi, I'm Leon. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're here, expect lots of videos on how to tie rigs, like a multi-rig, like how to zig rig fish, my in-session videos like I am now. We also go live on the bank every week when I'm fishing, and lots of carpy videos. Everything to do with carp and how I go about my fishing. So you might want to hit that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, don't forget to hit the little bell icon, which will give you notifications and you won't miss anything. So what's happening? What's in this week's show? Well, we are at the Peterborough Lake. We're here. I've set up. All my kit's out. I'm all done and dusted. I had a good look round and I've seen the fish underneath the surface, about a foot, two foot, maybe three foot below the surface. Spoke to a couple of guys who are on here. They've had a couple of zigs, so I've put two rods on the old zigs. I did look up the other end where I was successful with that 39 pound mirror I was last time here, but it's a cold wind. It's actually quite bloody freezing. So I've sort of discounted that for the, for the moment, but if they start showing up there, then I'll, I'll be up there, don't worry about that. I've seen a few moving about down here. So rather than film and talk to you first of all, what I want to do is get a couple of zigs out there. Middle right hand rod, the old lures, the old lure fishing as I call it, they're out there and I've seen a couple of fish top and swimming around and little bubbles coming up so I'm feeling rather confident with the old zigs. Left hand rod, that's out to a nice little spot, a certain amount of wraps but when I've been in here before I found this spot, marked it down on my phone in my notes section on my notes app and I've got my left hand rod on there, multi rig, nice little fluoro pop up on there, a little pink one, just to see if I can catch one off the bottom. So I'm edging my beds, zigs and bottom baits, there's a precious drop, drop in. At the moment it's about 1027, so it's quite high. That's why I suspect the fish are up in the water. Plus, I've seen lots of these little flies, lots of the little sort of black May flies, I think they might be called, because we're in May. <laughs> so, that's how I'm fishing. We've also got the special guest. He's back in the house. Have a look at him there, look. He's back. He's back for us. Here he is, look. Your favourite mate. Your favourite mate. Look at him. He's back. He's back with us. The old carp dog. What can you say about that, eh? So, he's back in the house. We've got him in this session as well, so you'll be seeing plenty of him. I'm just going to talk a bit about my rigs, nice little bottom bait rigs. Watch to the end. I'm going to talk you through a um, not not a, one of the pop-ups like I normally use, but a nice bottom bait rig, a nice sort of stiff stiff rig with a little bit of movement around the hook. So we'll be talking about that near the end. So watch to the end, guys. Let's have a look down here. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the rods. See what's happening. Now I've got two. As I said that middle and that right hand rod that's fairly tightish lines if you can see from the bobbins fishing types and fishing the zigs on them a little bit of a drop but not a lot left hand rods flat on the floor because it's so gin clear here that the fish i'm pretty sure they're, they're bumping in the lines or seeing the lines so that one's as flat on the bottom as possible just try to fire out a few baits and the old flying rats the old seagulls they were getting them. So I'm going to wait till it gets dark. I'm going to put about 10 or 20 baits out like I normally do. You know, a little 10, 15 millers, spread them out there around the left hand rod. So it's looking good. I've got 48 hours to make something happen, whether it be on the zig or whether it be on the, uh, on the multi rig. So that's where we're at. Oh, let's just have a look at the temperature because it's bloody cold, like I said. It's been cold for the last couple of weeks. It's the 9th, 9th of May now, so you expect the water temperatures to be up near the 18s or a bit of sun. Freezing northerly, northeasterly winds, just damn bloody cold. Right, let's have a look at the temperature. Now, he's telling me that's 14 and a half degrees, that's about four degrees, three and a half, four degrees off what it should be this time of year. Because a lot of lakes, by the end of May, beginning of June, they're spawning, aren't they? They're starting to spawn. They ain't got no chance at the moment. Don't forget, that's the top top layer of the water. So it's going to be colder down below. That's why, with the pressure and the temperature of the water, I think they're up in the layers. And the fly hatches, of course. You know, where else would they be? 
Now I know a guy in here, he spent a couple of days in here, I see him as he was coming to the gate as I was, he's going out the gate as I was coming in, he said he had one off the bottom, but he don't fish zigs. So, but a guy across, across from me, over there, right opposite, he had, he said two, both on zigs. He said two, both on zigs. 29 pounder and a 23 pounder. I photographed the 23 pounder for him. Beautiful, scaly beast, you know, like they all are in here. So gin clear, they go really dark, the fish. It's just, um, you know, it's just a pure, pure gin clear lake. It's really deep. I'm fishing in about 20 foot of water, I suppose. With the zigs, I'm about three foot below the surface. So I'm trying to cover both lots. Oh, look at that, look. Look at that. That's one just come straight out there, look. Look at that out there. See that? They're up on the surface. They're not going down. That's some feeding on the fly hatches. So we're in the right area, and it's all to play for. So I'm going to get the kettle on, cuddle up to the old carp dog, get me thermals on, I think, see how the session progresses. Well, it's about 20 minutes before dark. Would you believe it? Not long after I spoke to you last, fish started bouncing around all over the place, all around me zigs, and I had a bite. Couple of bleeps, up and down, up and down. Bobby was going up and down. Hooked into it, played it for about 20 minutes. I even had it in the net once, almost in the net, and the hook pulled. The hook pulled, couldn't believe it. I'm wounded. I'm proper wounded that I've lost one. But I think I'm going to get another bite on the zig, maybe tonight. So I'm leaving them out for the night. Looking, looking beautiful out there. But gutted that we've lost one. Black bit of foam. If you want to know about how to tie the zigs up and everything else, I'll stick a little, probably up there, a little card that'll just show you, which will go into more detail about how I set the zigs up and everything. And the hook bait and the, how I set it all up properly and you know how I use the adjustable zig. So click that up there if you haven't already and go and watch that. That'll give you a bit more insight into how I actually set them up a bit bit more. So whilst we're gated, whilst we're wounded, oh by the way the carp dog, he come out, had a look, come down the rods, I'm playing the fish, he had one look, went back to bed. Would you believe it? He weren't impressed at all. A little head popped up when I swore because I lost it. A little head popped out like that, popped out underneath the covers, all oh, right yeah, went back in, bless him. So normal service has resumed with him, he's just staying in there in his pit. So I've got a night of him fidgeting in the bag. <laughs> Bless him, little sod. <laughs> and jumping out at three in the morning, chasing something, waking me up, what's going on? Bless him, eh? God. But I love him, that's the main thing. And you love him, don't you? You guys out there, and the women watching this, you love him, the old carp dog. So, we're all set for the night. Left hand rod, leaving it out there on the spot. Bottom bait, well, not bottom bait, pop up, and the other two rigs. I've recast them both out there. Look how beautiful that looks for sunset in the clouds. Cast them out there. One's out there. One's out to the right, a bit shorter. And I reckon I'm going to get a bite on them tonight. Just look at that sky up there. And you see it's quite light, isn't it? I'm fishing those zigs two or three foot below the surface. A little bit of black foam. And the fish cruising around, looking up, are going to see that silhouette and think it's one of them little mayflies, one of them little bugs. And Bob's your uncle will be away. Well, that's the plan anyway. You know, all good plans, maybe. We'll see. That might be the old bite for the 48 hours. I don't think so, though. I've just got a feeling. Seeing them bouncing around today, you know, that bite, I just feel like I'm uh, going to get another bite. Hopefully land that, land this one. So that's where we're at. Going to go back and uh, give the old carp dog a little bit of a dig, wake him up. And uh, gonna settle in tonight, get some dinner, get the kettle on, and chill out and watch the uh, watch the shows if they show, and hopefully stay awake for as long as possible, and hopefully get a bite. Catch up with you soon, guys. Well, that didn't take long, did it? After losing that fish, this time left hand rod on a bottom bay. Would you believe it? Nice common, lovely common. 32, 14. Look at that. Oh, look at that for a beast. Fought like a demon. Fought like an absolute demon. 
multi rig scoring again. Look at that. What a fish. Well, let's get her back. Let's get them rods back out there. It's getting on the dark, just dark now. Let's see what happens. <laughs> On first light, look how beautiful it is out there. Look, lovely. Look at that, beautiful. Mist is rolling in. Have we managed to catch another one? Get him in there. Nice mirror. I reckon about. Oh. 20 pound, 18, 20 pound. Let's get him out. I'm not gonna bother weighing him. Just gonna unlock him and let him go back for the morning. I'm gonna get the kettle on. So let's get him out, weigh him up. There he is, lovely little mirror. Beautiful little mirror, about 18, 19 pound. Let's get him back to fight another day. Well, that's turned out for the books, wasn't it? What I did last night, I'll tell you exactly what I did last night after I had that 32 common. I was just thinking about it, I looked at the weather forecast and the pressure's going to drop like I thought it would do, it's really going to drop. I just had a feeling after catching that fish off the bottom that they were going to start feeding on the bottom. So I reeled in the two zigs, put on two multi-rigs, banged them out there in the dark, sprayed about 20 baits around each rod, little 12, mil 12 millers. And voila, this morning, just gone five o'clock, first light. I have a bite. Nice little, about 18, 19 pound mirror, I reckon it was. What do you reckon? 20, 18, 19 pound? I reckon about that. Which is a nice little early morning wake up call. Now, I'm just gonna bang that other rod out. Fire another 20 baits around it, because I reckon I'm gonna get, well, possibly, chance of another bite this morning, which is only early. You get a bite at any time of day especially in the morning over this lake so we're going to do that we're going to get the kettle on and i'm just going to watch how beautiful it looks out there with the rolling mist just roll it's just rolling just rolling in before the uh, sun gets up and burns it off this morning it's just going to be a little bit warmer today there'll be no cut overcast no cloud i mean it was bloody freezing last night i mean we're 10th of may right and it's Absolutely freezing. There's a frost on the unlucky mat. Would you believe that? So, as you can see, thermals are on. I'm gonna get that kettle on, get that rod out, spray a few more baits out now, sit back and enjoy them all. Eventful morning, no more action. So I've reeled the rods in. But there don't seem to be as many fish up here as there was yesterday or this morning. There's a couple out of the surface out there, not as many as there was. Plus, the wind started blowing up that end. So I've reeled in the rods. Me and a carp dog, here he is, look, here he is, waiting to go. We're gonna have a little walk round, give him a little run out because he's been festering in his pit in there, doing nothing. So me and the carp dog, we're gonna take a little trip round the lake, see if we can find some fish, because that wind's gonna get a bit stronger up there as well, and we might even move, which is a bit mad, isn't it? Because you know, I've had two fish, I lost one, in the last 24 hours from this area, but you just, you know, my gut feeling is telling me there's not as many fish as there was up here. 
and it could be on the move somewhere else. Pressure's going to proper drop as well tonight, down to under a thousand, and the wind's going to blow up there. So it might be a move is on the cards to maximise this last night. So I'm going to go for a walk. Me and the carp dog, we're going to go and see if we can find some fish. Me and the old carp dog, we had a good look round in all the nooks, all the crannies. Everywhere, wind's trickling up there. Looks nice up there, but didn't see no fish up there at all. Nothing at all up there. Really surprised me. You know, really surprised me. Then when we walk round the back over there, I'll show you. When we walk round the back, round the back of this bank, there's loads of them. All the way along. In the margins, all the way along. Up there, just gliding around, doing nothing, just sunning themselves. In that corner, especially over there, in that corner, there's quite a few, but I've done it before, moved on to them like that, stuck a couple of baits out there, and then come night time, they've gone, disappeared in front of this area. So I'm gonna stay here, get the rigs out, get the baits out, cast them out, and get ready for the night. I'm gonna pack up a lot of my gear though, because they might disappear up the other end if a bit of wind goes. I think the wind's gonna change a little bit, but the pressure's proper dropping. You never know, we might, get a couple more or I'd get another bite on the bottom so there that's where we're at that's where we're at and what I'm going to do now is after I've got the rods out and that I'm going to show you that bottom bait rig or waft the rig you can use bottom bait or wafter on it and we'll go through it and I'll just give you a quick insight into it and it might help you in your fishing if you're fishing on clean spots this are um, you know it's a nice nice rig nice sort of stiff presentation but I'll show you in a minute I'm going to get the rods out and then come back to you. Well, I'm going to show you a rig which I use a lot for on a clean bottom, a bottom bait rig that can be used over a very clean bottom or a little bit choddy bottom where you can use a wafter hook bait instead of a dumbbell like I do or a straight bottom bait or you can dock to your bottom bait by putting a bit of cork in it to make it slow sinking. But that's the rig, that's the D rig. You know, let's take you from the top there, I'll show you. That's on a lick core, sort of pattern oyster rig, which is a little bit, which is running. I use a heavy lead, about four or five ounce lead. So I want it to stay still, and I'll make the rig work for itself. It's gonna work for you. <clears throat> so, we've got 25 pound clear amnesia. You can use black amnesia, or a hook link of your choice, which is relatively stiff. This is quite a stiff, as you can see, quite a stiff hook link. And you can see there, that there, the knot on the ring, that's a three turn Grinner knot, and there's no loop. Some people, they use loops on their stiff links, but I like to use a, a steady knot rather than a loop, because I want this hook link, which is semi stiff, to to work for me. I don't want the loop so it can be going all over the place. I want that to stay fixed and this to move about in the fish's mouth. So when it picks it up, it can't blow it straight out. It's got to go at the side of the mouth. So going down, that's about eight inches, I suppose, about eight, eight inches long, eight, nine inches long. You can have it six or seven. I've had it down to five inches and it's worked, but roughly about eight inches long. There you've got a chod type hook. Now that's a pinpoint hooks chod size four. I like a big hook for this, but you can use whatever hook you're confident in, whatever choddy type hook that you use. And that's been tied like a no lockless knot and a D. The loop, you put the end tag through, burn it off, and that creates the D on there. Hence why it's called the stiff D rig, I call it. Little, little uh, small ring on there. To give it movement on the D. And I've got a dumbbell, 15 mil dumbbell I think that is, 15, 16 mil dumbbell. I can use it with a dumbbell or a straight bottom bait out of the bag. Because what you want it to do when the fish picks it up is that's going to blow back while still keeping that hook link and that hook in its mouth. So this works really well on a clean bottom. Casts well, doesn't tangle. I suppose you could use it on a clip system but I always use it on a sort of pattern oyster type rotary rig system. And you can adjust the bead up and down for how much movement you want in it. You can have it right tight down if it's really clean the bottom and shorten the hook link up. 
but I've caught lots of fish on that bottom bait rig. Give it a go. What I do is I put all the different bits to make the rig, I put it in the description below so you can just click on it and go and have a look at the products or even buy the products if you want to make the rig up or use your own use your own products that you that you use and have confidence in. But that's a really good bottom bait rig on a clean bottom or slightly choddy bottom, give it a go and I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's caught me loads of fish over the years. Well, I hope you enjoyed that bottom bait rig. It's a really good rig. Something you should use in your fishing if you're fishing on hard areas and you want to fish a bottom bait on there. Sometimes a pop-up can be a little bit too, too revealing, too obvious to the fish. Something like that with a bit of a stiff link, big lead, nice sharp hook and a bait that moves about in that D-ring. D-ring stiff rig, I call it. You know, can work a treat. And not many people use it, I don't think. I've seen it in a few places and I've seen a few people using it, but not many use it. Right, so I want the fishing. What we, what's happened today? Well, I've had another walk round. There's just no fish up that end whatsoever. Not one, not seen one all day. All the fish have been out here along that bank. They've been swimming about on top and poor poison out a couple of times. So yeah, I could have put zigs on. Could have, could have, should have, would have put the old zigs on. But the reason I haven't is because the pressure's dropping. I've just checked my phone. Look, I'll just show you. Look, let's have a little look on. Let's have a look on the phone. I'll tell you on the old weather app. And that's tonight. Tonight, a thousand and four. Now, considering yesterday, yesterday was a thousand twenty odd. That's a major crash, isn't it? Considering I'm fishing out in 20 foot depths, I've got three rods fishing on the bottom with the multi-rigs with the pop-ups on. I think that's one of the reasons we had a drop in pressure that I had those two fish off the bottom. What I wanted to do was get the rods out there nice and early. So this afternoon, I think it's about one o'clock after I spoke to you guys, I banged all three rods out on the spots, donks, lovely. Don't want to disturb it out there because the fish have been swimming around and all that. Last thing I want to do is, like now, bring my zigs in half an hour before the sun sets and create, create loads of disturbance. Because if anything, I would have wanted to leave the zigs out all night, but not with the drop in pressure. I want to fish on the bottom with the drop in pressure. Anything below 1,010, I'm on the bottom. Bang, simple as that. Anything above 1,010, I like to fish the zigs or up in the water, floater fishing or whatever or swap around but where these fish are so spooky of lines and leads and everything else last thing I want to be doing is bringing in those big zig floats across the water three of them big long six foot hook links maybe I might have had one today or, or whatever or lost a couple of fair looked one or whatever cause loads of disturbance then I'm sticking out my leads trying to get the spot three or four casts it's not the one is it so I think tonight it was about oh, just on dark, I had that lovely 32 plus common. I'm going to wait the old flying rats. Because look, no black chickens, none at all anywhere. Brilliant, I haven't seen one. I've seen a few mallards, but I haven't seen a black chicken since yesterday. A bit strange, something's going on, and there's no black chickens about. But they've been replaced by the flying rats, the old seagulls. Them things. As soon as I went and even go to pick up the frying stick, bang, there's about 50 of them all going round and looking at me and don't know what's going on. So just as it gets dark, like I did yesterday, I'm going to put 20, 30 baits out there, maybe even more this time, about 40 across the three rods. And it was literally 20 minutes later, just on dark, and I had that bite on the left-hand rod while the two zigs were still out. So that's the plan of action for the last night. You know, pressure's off, thankfully, Luckily, I've managed to catch a couple, so I'm buzzing about that, especially that beautiful common, like a two-tone common, wouldn't it? A bit strange, a bit mad. So that's the plan anyway, you know, so even if nothing happens tonight, or in the morning again, because we're going to get five degrees, four degrees again, we're going to have another frost. It's been 15, 16 degrees today, and we're going to have another frost tonight. It's crazy. You know, look, there's one, just poked it out over there. Look, don't you see that? See that around here? See? 
they're on top as soon as that sun goes down another 10 15 minutes they'll be going down the bottom I want to get a bit of bait out there give a bit of attraction going up through the water column and I'm already positioned I'm not casting a lead about everywhere so that's the plan if I don't catch anything tonight I can go home happy as a sound boy the two and a half two and three quarter hour journey home happy as anything because I've had a couple and I've lost one but I've got a sneaking suspicion there's more bites to be had because it's falling pressure and it's a big moon as well so it's common Big common weather, and there is a big common in here that hasn't been out for a year or so. So let's just check that water temperature now. Look, 16.1, 16.1 in the edge, and that was down. I can't remember what it was yesterday, I think it was 15 or something like that. So it's going up, isn't it? We've had a bit of sun today, see what happens. I'm going to go and give him a kick in there. The old carp dog, because he's done nothing all day. Nothing, look, have a look at him. Give me a look, look. Have a look at this, look. Look at that, that's a life, isn't it? Look at that, look, can't even be bothered to look at the camera. God, that is a life, isn't it? Right, so guys, hopefully, you'll see him in the dark again, with a nice fish, or in the morning, when all that mist is rolling along, with another fish. See you in the morning, guys, I'll see you in the night. Morning guys, beautiful morning this morning, but no fish. A few were showing last night and I felt com confident, as I fell asleep, I felt confident that I was gonna get a bite sometime during the night or this morning, but nothing, nada, nothing. Wind's changed around a little bit, it's blowing down that way. It's gonna be 20 degrees today. So I'd like to be here, but I've got to pack up and go to work shortly. Carp dog, look, look at him, look. Look at it, here he is, look. Here he is, all in there. He's had a great time, and it's nice to see him back on the bank, isn't it? After his little foray into fighting with other dogs, bless him. Well, tacked, wasn't he? Well, also, if you like that D-rig, that stiff D-rig presentation for the bottom bait fishing, or the wafter, I'm gonna put all the descriptions, all the products, all the bits and pieces down in the comments, not in the comments section, in the description. So you just click on the links, go and look at the orcs, go and look at the and these, or you, you buy it for Amazon or whatever. I'm going to put all the links and bits and pieces down there so you won't miss it. And if you want to have a look, further look, press one of the links. Also, I'm going to put it over to you guys now for comments. I want your comments down there of videos that I could do, like questions about anything to do with your fishing, weedy legs, spotting, anything like that. And then when I do my sort of... Um, videos during the week I'm going to concentrate on three comments from you guys and answer them a bit more in detail because when I do the live ones it's really quick as it churns round so I can't answer them answer them really quickly but <coughs> and with a separate video I can pick three of, of yours of your comments your questions your queries about your fishing and answer them a lot more in detail so put your your questions and your queries down there in the comment section and I'll get round. I will, I will answer every single one and hopefully we'll stick a few in separate videos. So which brings me on to, I'm gonna pack up and go home now. If you really like these type of videos, please subscribe, hit the little bell icon, because then you'll get all notifications, you won't miss anything. So until next time, see you guys, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.